Hi friends, in this video we will make an eternal flashlight. At least the service life of this flashlight will be several decades. It isn't afraid of severe weather conditions, impacts, it has a low cost and can be made from any at hand stuff. It is based on the design of the flashlight of Faraday, but our version has several advantages. The construction of Faraday lanterns is quite simple. The winding of the coil is wound on a non-metallic frame or tube. Inside of the tube, a magnet moves freely. During this movement, an alternating magnetic field is formed, due to the phenomenon of electromagnetic induction. To that point, this effect was discovered by Michael Faraday and named after him. In the coil winding arises an alternating current, and then this current is rectified to a constant and accumulates in the battery or capacitor. The stored energy fed to the LED. In fact, this is a simple generator with a backup power source, and the movement of the magnet is provided by shaking the flashlight. Often, an ionister or supercapacitor is used as a backup source. Ionisters are something in between the battery and the capacitor. In contrast to the capacitors, their capacitance can reach hundreds or even thousands of farads, but they have fairly compact dimensions. Like capacitors, the ionister is capable to give huge currents. They are not afraid of a full discharge and negative temperatures. They also have a long service life. According to Chinese manufacturers, the number of charge cycles is more than a million. In particular, ionister's working voltage can be 2.7 volts. In my case, it's used an ionister with a capacity of 0.047 farad with a voltage of 5.5 volts. In fact, inside are two ionisters connected in series. I don't advise using ionisters with a capacitance of more than 2.2 farad. Otherwise, a simple linear generator of such size will charge it extremely long. The printed circuit board for such a simple circuit does not make sense, but if your projects need printed plates, we recommend the GLC PCB side. This is one of the largest PCB manufacturing plants. It's easy. Download your Gerber file, select the options you need, pay for the order and wait for the parcels. The factory will produce printed circuit boards of any shape and complexity. Free shipping is available at the first order, and the price starts from $2 for 10 pieces. A link to purchase of GLCPCB will be found in the description. In the project, I decided to use a boost converter. As we know, to power the LEDs, we need a voltage above 2 volts. Depending on the type and color of the LED, this voltage will be different. Therefore, the LED will not light up until the required voltage will be applied to the ionister. The converter will allow increasing, given a minimal voltage to the required level and ensuring a normal glow of the LED by sucking out all from the ionister. The converter circuit is very simple, just one transistor, a resistor and a transformer. Thanks to a germanium transistor, our converter starts from a voltage of only 0.25 volts and continues to work even if the supply voltage drops to 0.17 volts. In other words, the flashlight was shaken a couple of times and the LED already lights up. I use the neodymium magnet. It is better to use a single magnet, but you can also build from several identical ones. The size of my magnets are now in front of you, and the link to the purchase is in the description under the video. To assemble the generator, we need a pair of 5 ml syringes, preferably with a rubber piston and a copper wire with a diameter of 0.1 to 0.3 mm. Syringes you will cut as shown in the video, then they must be glued or connected by adhesive tape. Then, from the soft plastic, you need to make a section for the coil winding, so that the winding works more efficiently and looks nice. You can wind the winding manually, but if you have an electric screwdriver and a couple of small parts, you can quickly assemble the winding device.
The winding contains about 1,200 turns. To say honestly, I did not count the number of turns, but knowing the time of the winding and the number of the revolutions of the screwdriver per minute, I can approximately calculate the number of turns. Next, the assembled generator should be tested. We clean the lacquer from the ends of the wires, connect the LED, and shake. If it doesn't work or works worse than expected, don't despair. Just need to remove the magnet and put it with the opposite side. Then everything will work as it should. By the way, the maximum current produced by such a generator reaches to 50 milliamperes. It's a pretty high value. Now the generator is ready. The winding can be fixed with an adhesive tape. Let's begin assembling the converter. It's a converter of an auto generator type. The transformer consists of two windings. The circuit works thanks to the bursts of self-inductance of the throttle. The voltage of the self-induction can be tens of times higher than the supply voltage. The transformer is wound on a ferret ring, which can be found in all the ballasts of compact fluorescent lamps, but the dimensions of the ring aren't critical. For the convenience, both windings are wound with the same wire and contain the same number of turns. The wire diameter in my case is 0.3 mm and the number of turns is 20. Next, the windings must be faced. The beginning of the first winding connects to the end of the second winding, thereby obtaining the midpoint. Now we check the converter operation. We fit to the input 1.5 volts, simulating a battery. The LED glows brightly. Everything works well, and we can go further. The rectifier is collected on Schottky diode since they have a very small voltage drop. It isn't advisable to use ordinary diodes because we will lose more than 1 volt after the rectifier. Next, we need to close the tube with rubber seals. For this purpose, use pistons from syringes. Of the 30 mm syringe was made the main body, in which was put all the stuffing. We collect everything. Maybe needs adhesive electrical tape. LEDs are 3 mm, but they shine quite well. At least in the dark room illuminate objects quite well. Friends, this video came to the end. Don't forget to subscribe to my group in Facebook. The link is under the description. With you was Cassian TV. Bye. See you later.